Call this meeting of the Pittsburgh City Commission to order. Will you please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. All right, we'll open the meeting this evening with public input. So if you have anything to share this evening, feel free to come forward to the podium, state your name and address. Hello, my name is Kelly Gartner. Uh, my address is 1407 Bittner Place here in Pittsburgh. And I'm Marsha Marconi. I am her mother-in-law. And our address is 110 East Center Street in Madison, South Dakota. I'm a lifelong resident of Pittsburgh, Kansas. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces in here, so I know I, a lot of you guys know that. Um, my husband and Justin, hus, husband Justin and I, he's back there, had the good fortune to uh, purchase our family home about five years ago. This was a home that was built my, by my grandparents. It was the first house in Bittner Edition. We're very, very proud to own it. Um, since we moved in there, we got along wonderfully. Everything's been beautiful. We love our neighborhood. Um, I came here tonight to talk to you about ordinance number G1260, specifically Article 4, having to do with recreational vehicles and trailers. Subpoint B is my main concern here. Um, this is the part where it says that at no time shall a permanently or temporarily parked or stored recreational vehicle or item of recreational equipment be occupied for use or used for living, sleeping, or housekeeping purposes except a recreational vehicle permanently parked in compliance with this ordinance may be occupied for sleeping purposes only for a period not to exceed, exceed 14 consecutive calendar days in any three month period. It also states that the zoning administrator may authorize an extension of time for extenuating circumstances. My husband's parents, my mother-in-law, um, several years ago, they sold their home, their lifelong Pittsburgh residents too, um, sold their home, they bought a travel trailer and they're living their dream of traveling this country and seeing all the things that we all wish we got to do all the time. Um, the bad part is that means they don't get to spend a whole lot of time with us. So they do come and we have them come visit. Um, we tried to keep with all of the city ordinances. We had a Pittsburgh business come in and hook up electrical to our house so that they could plug in when they were there. We had another Pittsburgh business come in to lay down some concrete pads so that they could park on the concrete pads to keep us all, all within code. Unfortunately, although there is nearly 75 feet between my nearest neighbor and I, yards, yards sorry, <laughs> 75 yards between my nearest neighbor and I, um, he does not seem to feel the way, same way we do and is somewhat offended by their travel trailer being at our house um, to the point of within 24 hours upon their arrival, he's already called to complain to the city. Um, we get, we've had city people out at our house all the time. I spent most of my day today on the phone with the city, so um, I'm, I'm here today to ask if the commission, I do understand the ordinance. I completely understand that. You know, I get that you don't want a whole bunch of people living in trailers out in the middle of fields or whatever. And I also understand that this ordinance was written with the, un with the expectation that, you know, those are the people you're trying to prevent. You know, you don't want homeless people just randomly living in a trailer in a field somewhere. My in-laws are not homeless. <laughs> they have their home. They just take it with them everywhere. Um, so it's kind of hard because they come to Pittsburgh and because they're Pittsburgh residents, their doctors are here. Their banks are here. Everything they do is here. They, you know, they spend money while they're here. They are a part of the Pittsburgh community still while they're here. Unfortunately, it's really, really hard to get all of those things done in a 14-day period. And so that results in them having to go out to um, Parkview or out on 20th Street further out and, and pay for a place when we have a perfectly acceptable place for them that they can come and stay. Um, like I said, there's plenty of room. They have a beautiful trailer. It's gorgeous. My mother-in-law has some photos to show you. Um, I guess what I, what I would like to ask the commission to consider is extending that 14-day period to maybe a period of 30 days. Um, 
that gives them a little more time to get here to do their things and like I said they are members of this community while they're here and you know they're members of this community while they're not here they still read the Pittsburgh newspaper they still know everything that's going on in Pittsburgh because we're here um, if that's not an option you know is there some way that we can make it to where my in-laws can come and stay with us and stay right next to us because this is all about family to us. This is all about family and community and we don't want to fight with our neighbors by any means. But we're kind of down to what else can we do at this point because it's gotten to the point where, I mean, they're sitting out on their porch and watching us and watching what we do every day and it's, it's kind of creepy really. So, but, you know, we just want them to be able to come here and feel like Pittsburgh still welcomes them and feel like, you know, we want them to be here because we do want them to be here. So um, I guess I'd just ask, I, I would like to ask the commission to consider extending that 14 day stay or to even allow, you know, one or two times a year an extended stay longer than 14 days so that they could come maybe one or two times a year and just stay with us for maybe a month so that my kids get to see them, their grand, they get to play with their grandchildren, and they can take care of all of their business in Pittsburgh that they need to. Um, that's pretty much everything I have to say, and I'll kind of turn it over to Marcia now so that she can kind of explain a little bit from, about where they're coming from. Yeah, we've been doing this for a couple of years. We've been on the road four and a half to five years. Um, we just had the pads put in last year over at Kelly and Justin's. Um, what it boils down to, and first off, I would like to thank Mr. Munsell for coming out and looking at the property and the trailer, and for Don McMay for returning my call and giving an ear to me. I really appreciated that. She seemed to know kind of where I was coming from. She knew where I was talking about. Um, the whole thing comes down to we, we tried to do everything that the city had asked us to do, which I think we have. The only thing I'm sorry for is from the get-go, we were not told about the codes, uh, not until we started doing step-by-step -step of what you need to do to stay here. Um, we've gone and stayed with the kids. Uh, the whole thing boils down to uh, none of the other neighbors in that neighborhood seem to care that we're there. They honk at us, they wave at us, they're very friendly except for the one neighbor. And like I said, I have pictures if you care to see. We're 75 yards, if not more, from this gentleman's home. We don't bother him, we never have. And from what I understand, it's a picky thing with him and the city, but now he's got the city involved with us. And now we're kinda at a place we don't know what to do because we really don't want to get a bunch of lawyers involved in all of this. That's the last thing we wanna do. We don't know what to do with him. Uh, my son and I went over last year. We tried to talk to the neighbor in a civil tone and he just didn't wanna to listen to us. He was very rude to us. And when I told him that we would be coming back, he took that as a threat. And from what I understand, he called the city again. He's written letters, I think, to all of you commissioners and complained about us. Um, we're just at a standpoint. We don't know what to do. We're asking for extensions of a 30 day. That's it, even if it's for once a year, just so we can get our doctor's appointments and everything taken care of. I'm looking at knee replacement within the next few weeks, but that we're taking off the board. We're not. We know this can't be solved in just a couple of weeks, but we just don't know what else we need to do to resolve this, and if there is anything that we can do. So we just appreciate your help at some point. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. If I can, yep. Mayor Johnson. Members of the commission, I, my name is Mark Warner. I'm an attorney in Pittsburgh. You have what they didn't want to have happen. I represent Mr. Richard and Marilyn Tyndall, the neighbors who have the other side of the story. 
And I'm not going to get personal about what's going on with this neighborhood, but I will tell you that the reason that we have zoning laws in this community is to protect the neighborhood and the integrity of the neighborhood and not to select out any one or two individuals and the circumstances of the individuals is to protect the neighborhoods and to protect the residents within the neighborhoods. People buy their houses for a particular purpose and to protect the values of their property's assets and to protect the value of the properties and to protect the sight lines of those properties and to protect the integrity of those properties. And if we start carving out exceptions for one individual or one individual property, then we're going to have to expect our staff to start enforcing on a case-by-case -case basis those individuals and those individuals' needs. If our community did not have adequate parking for mobile properties, mobile homes, uh, whether they be at 20th and the bypass or across the street in a private uh, structure, uh, the, the facility there has ample long-term parking, this could be a problem, but it's not. Uh, I appreciate these folks and they're coming to town to visit, but they made the lifestyle choice to sell their homes and to travel and to come to Pittsburgh for whatever their needs are. They can park where they choose on a long-term basis. They can obtain all the necessary medical and other needs that they have. There's nothing restricting them from doing that. They can visit their children as many times as they want and they can leave town as long as they want and come back as often as they want. The only thing that we're asking them not to do is to park this enormous travel trailer on a sight line to someone else's homes. That's the problem. And my clients have every right to expect the city of Pittsburgh to enforce the zoning laws that this city adopted and has enforced over the years. And all these other issues aren't germane, aren't relevant, and aren't to be considered. And I don't know how you, when you go down this road to pull out and make an exception in this case, that you're going to start seeing pop-up trailers and tents and other types of structures in a community. Do we want to go there? I don't believe we do. Uh, there's a reason for these kinds of ordinances to be in place. 14 days is more than adequate for people that come into our community and park their vehicles, and they're not intended to be permanent. Uh, this last year, in 2017, this travel trailer was parked in the driveway from April 1st to July 15th. And I ask you, would you like to have that parked next to your home for that long a period of time? And so that's the issue here. So we would ask you not to carve out an exception. It's not necessary, uh, and it's not appropriate under the circumstances. And would ask you to not take any due consideration for this request, to keep in mind that my clients have every bit as much right as do these folks to ask you to maintain the zoning ordinance as they stand. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. I have a question, Baron. Yes. <clears throat> I, and I may misunderstand the ordinance, but um, it reflects a recreational vehicle being on a property for more than 14 days or being on a property and being lived in? Lived in. Lived in. So that travel trailer could stay there all year long if they didn't live in it. That's correct. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. I wanted to make sure I understood the ordinance. So You do. And I've driven around the neighborhood since this has come up and there are numerous vehicles parked around the neighborhood. Recreational vehicles. Okay. Yeah, but nobody's living in them, Patrick. I didn't go knock on the door, but they don't appear. To, <laughs> they don't appear to be lived in. Yeah. Well, this is. Uh, you know, I, I feel for you, people that has the, the travel trailer there, but also like Mark said, representing the Kindles, we have an ordinance uh, for the reason not to have people you know, living there. And I don't know 
if there can be an extension for a certain period of time. I understand that you had some uh, issues that you needed to see the doctor on and uh, had to have that done sometime this month. So I just wonder if there's any way we could uh, maybe extend it a little bit. I don't know what the thoughts of the rest of the commissioners are, but. You know, I'm okay with the staff looking at it and yeah. I think that's where we ought to go. Myself. I would be okay hearing the proposal from staff since they're the ones dealing with the ordinance and enforcing it. Well, staff, for good or bad, went through this last year, so we kind of are experienced in the situation, and, and it happened to involve the Marconis and the Tyndalls. So, you know, last year, it's, it's darned if you do, darned if you don't. Last year, we, we went ahead and gave the exception under the medical premise that there was some work that needed to be done, and um, that I think Dexter was probably new to the job, but nevertheless, um, we made the decision to give them an extension, and of course, I think that was what was referred to as the uh, extended period last year that they were allowed to stay there. I, I guess so where, where staff's at is, um, you know, where does it end? I mean, we've had, as, I can tell you this, when the, when the staff meets with both of these families, it's always positive, it's, it's professional, and I'm not talking about the staff side of it, I'm talking about what we get back from th these, these residents. Um, they're both very compelling stories. Um, our first inclination is to always give a waiver or, or an allowance, and so that's what we did last year, and I think um, the reason we're talking about it today probably is because we gave that allowance last year. So um, I'm, I have, uh, I don't live where the Tyndalls live, so I don't have that situation where um, the line of sight and all those issues. I also have a, a very loving family and completely understand what the Marconis are saying about wanting to spend time there. But um, in the end, we have rules. Um, everybody's aware of those rules. And uh, if, if I didn't think there was any hiccup, we would have extended it without even thinking again this year. But I think at some point you have to give consideration to the Tyndalls and the patients, the patients that they showed with us, not necessarily their neighbors, but with us last year as this thing extended on for two weeks and then a month and then I think two months. So um, not trying to get out of anything. Um, I, professionally, I don't know how we could make another recommendation to extend it um, knowing that it's been, they had an entire year and, and knew that they were only gonna have 14 days this year but I would sure like to find a way to. Um, is that bad enough? Is that a bad enough answer? Um, there's no good answer here. There's no. Is there a way for people to ahead of time apply for an exception, like a permit sort of thing? Ahead of, I don't know what the process is, but at any time you can ask for, the, you know, for us to waive it. I think it's on the building official or the zoning um, for Dexter to do that. So whether we get prior notice or not, it's, it can be done. It's just a matter of, are we just gonna do it every year for the same repeat property? Um, and how many times a year are you gonna do it for other locations? You open up that can of worms when you do that. And uh, if you drive around, there are so many of these vehicles parked in the neighborhood, in different neighborhoods, uh, I think you're you're uh, really getting a lot of exposure to a lot of to a lot of variances when you start this process. So the ordinance says that every three months they can come back for two weeks. Yep. <clears throat> and last year there was. I think last year they actually started at the at the RV park. There were some issues last year with. Uh, the homeless tents and around Colgan and what that turned into and the RV park had some, um, let's just say some nefarious characters living in it where I don't think it was an acceptable, uh, the Marconi's put up with it as long as they could. And then, so, so last year was just a different deal, but yeah, what it really comes down to is how often is this exemption 
allowable to any one family probably and, and what's right to do by um, the neighbors who are right down the street to the ones that are making the complaints. So it's a, uh, if and I had do, a better answer, I'd. And you do it to any on. one family, then you have to open it up to every family. And that is the issue. Well, sometimes the best, as unpleasant as it is, sometimes the best measure of how good a policy is is how often it's in play. And I know I've been here six years. I don't know how long Henry's been sitting in this chair next to this, but this is the only time this has come up. And this is an extremely personal. I, I can tell you that, and you've both been involved, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I think we need to hesitate changing ordinances that that aren't more at play, more in play than this. But I do want to acknowledge that this is personal, and and both both families are very passionate, and we take it very serious. I just think we need to take pause. And uh, if the ordinance was put there by another commission and they felt they were doing their best job and it's only come up once in six years, maybe in this case we probably should leave it and just, you know, I, I, there's, you know, it's tough. It's just tough. I do appreciate your patience with one another and with us and uh, that you came in tonight. And, uh, you know, we want everybody in Pittsburgh, we want everybody to enjoy their time in Pittsburgh. And, and unfortunately, there's just some things that we can't resolve. Are there any further comments on? If not, um, I don't know how many of you have been by my house, and I fully respect your decision. But I do want you to know, this trailer is not in their line of sight. Their front door faces an entire different direction. They have to come out and search to find the trailer. It is not in their line of sight. We're not doing anything wrong. We'll be more than happy to abide by any, any decision you guys make today because we have that kind of respect. Obviously, we came here as individuals we didn't hire an attorney. We didn't feel like we needed one because we're citizens of this community. Um, you know, we've been threatened, we've been spied upon. I guess maybe it's time to think about whether or not Pittsburgh is the home we thought that it was. Because, you know, you say, where do you draw the line when, you know, and I understand, I get where you're coming from. That does open a whole can of worms. But what about the spying? And what about the lies that are told about it being a piece of junk and a huge travel trailer? It's not a huge travel trailer, and it's not a piece of junk. It's beautiful, and I have photos. It's nicer than a lot of houses in this town. I know I've lived in some. <laughs> so, you know, and I just, I'm not asking you to change your minds. I just wanted to have that on the record, that this is a personal attack. This is the Tyndalls being personal. That, I believe, is shown by the fact that they have an attorney present, yet they're not here. And I'm here as just a mom and a citizen of Pittsburgh. And, um, you know, I guess I just wanted you guys to realize that this is not in their line of sight. It's not bothering them at all. There's no wild parties going on. Shoot, they're in bed by 8.30. I mean, <laughs> so... I just wanted that on the record so that everybody understands that this truly, truly is a personal thing, and that's all that it is. And, you know, where do we draw the line there? And, you know, do I need to look at filing charges now? Not against the city, but against my neighbors, because that's not what I want. I work for an attorney. I could have easily brought one in here with me tonight, but I didn't feel like I needed one. And it's unfortunate, and I think speaks a lot toward the Tyndall's state of mind, that that's the first place they went. So with that being said, thank you very much for your time. Um, I appreciate all of your consideration. Um, if there is ever a time when the Tyndalls leave town or something, that someone would like to get in touch with me so that we can revisit this, I would love to because I just want to have my family close by. So thank you again. Thank you. Well, I just want to thank you for coming up and, and speaking your mind at a commission meeting and public input because that's how we find out, you know, what the citizens' concerns are. 
a lot of times we hear things on the phone or an email and people don't want to come up and speak in public but i do commend you i wish there was something we can do but we do have an ordinance and you know and the neighbors want certain things done and we and the exception you know for you would like patrick said would might open the can of worms but i do want to commend you for coming up and speaking in front of us that took some courage so thank you thank you thank you how would i go about requesting an extension sir uh that man in the red shirt <laughs> <laughs> guy <laughs> but if you get it to me or anybody else we'll it to you. all right thank you very much thank, thank you, you so much kelly is there anyone else here for public opinion time all right if not we will close public opinion time and the next thing on the agenda is a presentation of the triple a platinum traffic safety award by jim hanning Good evening. Clearly, I'm not Jim Haney. <laughs> um, my name's Jennifer Hall. I'm with AAA Kansas. I took Jim Haney's place. Um, I'm here tonight to present the seventh consecutive AAA Kansas Community Traffic Safety Award to your Pittsburgh Police Department. I also want to recognize, although he's not here, uh, KDOT's Dave Corp. He is the uh, law enforcement liaison that helps us identify uh, agencies that should apply for this award. What's remarkable about the last six of these, they've been platinum awards for Pittsburgh, the highest award you can get, and no other agency sheriff, no other agency sheriff or PD has a more consistent track record of excellence other than this agency itself. So they're being recognized for their continued support of the SAFE program, the seatbelts are for everyone, at Pittsburgh and St. Mary's High Schools. Also being recognized for continuing to enforce a departmental policy requiring the use of seat belts. The agency is recognized for its deployment of new software to analyze traffic crashes and use a data drive, data driven approach to crime and traffic safety called DDAX, identifying hotspots to more efficiently place resources to reduce crime and traffic safety. In education, they're being recognized for operating a child safety seat fitting station to help parents as well as child safety seat checkup events. In enforcement, they're being recognized for their special traffic enforcement efforts that have addressed seat belt usage, child passenger safety, and impaired driving, and for their PSU school startup enforcement to address DUI and seat belt issues. The first two weekends that PSU is in session and the ticket or treat. The impressive list of statistics is what brings the Platinum Award. They're showing law enforcement presence, which changes behavior. Click it or ticket violations have gone from 197 in 2012 to 225 in 2016. Adult seatbelt use continues to climb from 80% in 2012 to 87% in 16. Teen seatbelt use from 81% to 89% over the same period. The safe schools now are at 99% seatbelt use. That's huge if you're familiar with those statistics. They were at 88% in 2012. Alcohol arrests have risen from 100 in 2012 to 170 in 2016. And also teen crashes have dropped from 64 in 2012 to 18 in the past five years. So I want to particularly thank now interim chief, I suppose, Brent Narsha, thank you, and the rest of his staff for doing an excellent job in traffic safety. Thank you, Jennifer. It's a quick second of our time here. I want to recognize two of our officers here. We first have Sergeant Travis Bowman. Uh, he is the coordinator for uh, the vast majority of our uh, traffic safety Officer Brett Dawn, uh, he was this past year the recipient of the Officer of the Year Award. And he also leads the agency in the number of uh, driving under the influence for DUI arrests for our agency. Uh, out uh, their efforts and the concerted efforts of our patrol division, as well as the support we get from not only our staff, but our commissioners as well. Uh, Good job, Brett. A 
question. Sorry, Brent. Yeah. Sorry. Um, she, Jennifer mentioned um, the, the data that are used. Is um, part of those tools a result of the safety tax, sales tax? The, the data that is gathered, much, some of the data that is gathered, yes, we report. Some of the data that AAA gets is from the state as well. Okay. So it's a combination of all that. But yes, the specific uh, New World program that we do have makes it much easier to get that information. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Moving on to the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Item F. Item F? Item E. Item E and F. Any others? If not, I will look for a motion for approval of the consent agenda minus items E and F. So Make a motion. Moved. Been moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Chinowith? Aye. Johnson? Aye. McNay? Aye. Munso? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. All right. Item E. Approval of staff recommendation into to enter into an agreement with the Kansas Department of Transportation, or KDOT, to make improvements to the State Highway K-126, which is 4th Street, bridge overpass, and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. Yes, uh, Cameron, my question uh, is, uh, I, I know the city is, uh, is paying for some ancillary uh, things about this overpass. Uh, do we have any guesstimate of what this is going to come up to? Uh, we don't have any cost in this agreement. Uh, the, I thought uh, we had to relocate the utilities and that kind of thing. Well, that's part of any of our uh, work beforehand. Yes, we would track yeah. that, but I think that the utilities have been through that. and We've got minimal, if not no, relocations expected as part of the project. And when they do this, uh, are we going to have a... A hiking biking trail across this bridge correct uh, there'll be a 10 foot wide path on the north side uh, they originally wanted to have five feet on each side we said we'd rather have 10 on one um, and uh, at that time they were trying to get us to pay for the extra and I think through negotiations which were all done before me so I can thank them for their hard work uh, mr. Beasley I think Darren was part of that and uh, mr. Bacon as well able to get that all done and I'll be part of the KDOT project and there won't be any construction costs to us. There could be some minor relocation costs for utilities. Any idea how much of Slanger Park will be uh, taken into this overpass or not? Um, there'll be just uh, some, basically when they reshape the hill, there will be some area. It's probably maybe a couple hundred feet is uh, what we looked at. Uh, it be, uh, came before the commission before uh, where it allowed the de minimis mm -hmm. impact to the park. So we have looked at that as a group and uh, reviewed and approved that. So is it going to affect the sled hill? Because yeah. I bet we'll get some phone calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine it probably will once oh. everything's said okay. and done. I don't think it'll be quite as steep. So uh, uh, we give and we take away I know. at times. It's being smarty. Thank you. That's all my questions. I just had a question on item F. Uh, oh, well, let's finish up on item E first. Oh. I'll, I'll take a motion for approval if there are no other questions. So Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. <laughs> item F. Yeah, item F, uh, not too long ago, uh, there was some discussion about continuing this uh, track crossing and the railroad would pay for it as long as we allowed them to close 10th and 7th Street down to through traffic. And I'm opposed to it then, and I just want to make sure that's not any part of this crossing uh, arrangement. No, it's not. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other questions, I'll Go. take a motion to approve. <laughs> I'll make a motion. Okay. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. All right, special presentation, department report, parks and recreation. Director of Parks and Recreation, Kim Vogel, will provide an update on activities within her department. Mayor, commissioners, thank you for allowing me this time to present the Parks and Recreation department report. I wanna start with some of the projects that we've completed in 2018. Most of these, actually all of these, started well before 2018. Um, but we're happy to see them done as are the citizens that have been utilizing the facilities. Um, JC 
uh, turf project was a large project that we finished um, before baseball season began in March. It was a $223,000 project um, that field turf um, did for us. To date, we have seen 115 games played at JC's and approximately about 9,000 visitors uh, to the ballpark since the, the new turf was put in. So we've had tons of compliments on the facility as a whole. It's, it's been very great um, for those playing and those spectating at the facility. Lakeside Park Playground received um, surfacing project was completed also uh, beginning of May this year. Uh, that was a Kansas Department of Health and Environment Waste Tire Grant Project. It's about a $25,000 project, matching funds for that. Great improvement to the park. It was uh, port in place surfacing was put in under the, the playground there. So that was completed in May, along with um, the, the Kitty Land train that was completed in May. We had the uh, May 4th ribbon cutting for that project. Um, project was done with Watco companies, uh, Vietti Auto Body, and uh, Mr. Jim Van Beesler assisted with that project for us. Um, Kitty Land opened, um, it's been open about 26 days now. We've sold um, 926 individual tickets so far to the park, as well as um, 614 punch cards, which that's um, 12 punches for $10. So um, in the 26 days we've been open, we've had uh, really, really good um, success so far, and hopefully we can continue to keep everything running through the summer. And we've also have five private, private parties booked at the facility. So those are some projects that have already been completed. Um, and then we've got several that are ongoing right now. The Ronald O. Thomas Dog Park um, is, uh, we're, staff is working on that. We are doing that project in-house, so it's gonna take a little bit to get it done. But um, if you'll remember, that's a $50,000 uh, project that was uh, donated, funding was donated by the Ronald O. Thomas Foundation, and it is in Schlanger Park. Uh, if you if you go to look, we've now got the, the concrete pad poured um, that will be the entrance to the facility and um, lead to both the small and large dog sections. So that is done. Um, we have a lot of amenities that are already um, on site um, in, in our storage unit waiting uh, for the fencing to go up. So as soon as we, we are able to get going with fencing that project, um, we're targeting mid-August for that to be completed. In Schlanger Park also, the Everybody Plays Playground um, Committee. If you'll remember at the beginning of the year, they received a $150,000 uh, donation, and that money is being used to leverage other projects within the park um, for funding to, to help with other projects in the park um, as matching money. Um, this year, we have already completed the sensory garden um, the garden is complete, uh, the butterfly garden is uh, normally what we call it, but sensory garden for the park. We're waiting on some pavers to be put in and, and benches and that facility will be open um, there. So the next steps for the Everybody Plays Committee, later this year we'll be looking at harmony play or musical play components that will be added to the park. Um, we're gonna be adding some sidewalk um, throughout the park and um, those play components will go along the sidewalk. So more of a linear play experience than, than just being bunched together um, to get, keep kids moving and playing through the, throughout the park. Another project that we're working on with Everybody Plays is a new shelter house for that side of the park, for the north side of the park. Um, we are looking at um, a structure that would be a, a PSU construction build. We have got a $10,000 donation already from Pittsburgh Beautiful for the facility. And then the Everybody Plays Committee has put in a $10,000 grant request to the Pritchett Trust for um, the completion of that facility. So if that, if that is um, awarded, then they'll be fully funded for that project. Um, we're looking at uh, 2019 before Pitt State could build that, and it would be identical to the shelter that Pitt State built at the PHS tennis courts earlier this year, and it would be a two-semester project just like that one was. And then a project that's been ongoing and about completed, we can almost check it off the list, is the wayfinding project. Uh, this project is, um, is a project to put signs around town to direct the visitors to various districts through the town, so the North Medical District, um, Downtown District, um, the retail districts around town, um, to the schools, uh, to the um, airport, and um, the football stadium. So um, excited about that project being completed. It was funded uh, $25,000 uh, through the Personal Health Actions for Prevention Grant through Livewell Crawford County. Um, the FAP grant is what we call it. So excited that some of those signs have already been up and um, hopefully in the next few weeks they will all be installed. So those are um, 
uh, some of the projects that are already ongoing. And then we have a few projects that we have written grants for this year um, that we haven't, we don't know if they're going to be awarded yet. So I want to update you real quick on what those are. Um, and some of them you heard about at our working day um, in, uh, in May. But the first one would be the, the Don Gutteridge um, Sports Complex, Complex Restroom and Concession Stand Project. This, um, we have asked for a $200,000 match from the Kansas Department of Wildlife um, and Parks and Tourism. Um, it's their Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. So that would provide us, if awarded, uh, the ability to build two new restroom and concession and storage facilities at the uh, Don Gutteridge Sports Complex. Um, this is extremely important, as you'll hear about the number of teams that we've already had through later, but currently we have um, three stalls that um, provide all of the women's, uh, girls facilities in that whole complex, um, and, and about equally for men. So um, we are definitely shy on restrooms, and um, so we're excited that that um, if we get this grant awarded, we'll be able to move um, hopefully pretty quickly with um, getting that project underway. Another project that we have applied for a grant funding is also with the Pritchett Trust. It is a project to put a trail along Memorial Drive on the north side of Memorial Drive. So it would run from Walnut Street to the west entrance of the ball fields um, and it would all be um, up kind of towards the tree line, kind of a scenic trail up until you get to um, to about the YMCA where it would have to narrow back in. Um, but we're excited about that project. We already had $28,000 in funding from the FAP grant through Livewell Crawford County that was for engineering work um, that was um, given to the city of Pittsburgh for engineering work. So we've asked the Pritchett Trust for another $47,000 per year for two years to complete that whole stretch of that project. Um, Worst case scenario, if they can only afford a part of it, then we just do um, part of it up to about the YMCA. But it's really important to get kids and families to that whole recreational district of the YMCA, um, the pool, um, and, and the ball fields. So safely down that road with all the, the trucks and the traffic that is on that road. And finally, the last Pritchett Trust grant that we requested, well, we requested a lot from the Pritchett Trust this year, um, was for, um, a new dragon slide, swing sets, and merry-go-round at Kiwanis Park. So um, that would be a, a $20,000 project for those three pieces of equipment to go into the park. So um, if awarded, we will see those updated. If not awarded, we will still have to remove the dragon slide um, because it's reached its lifespan. Um, so the Barney slide would, would need to go um, that faces Joplin Street. So those are a lot of the, the projects that, that we've been doing. As far as programs and facilities go, uh, Recreation Division, we have offered 138 classes, um, special events or programs already this year with over 1,600 enrolled participants in those classes. Uh, we have had approximately 191 baseball and softball teams through our um, facilities with, uh, with tournaments and leagues. So that's quite a few teams that have come through to use our, our three restroom stalls. Um, so, um, and then this summer, one of our biggest changes um, in the summer programming is our camp now and then. We've, we've started offering full-time camp last summer, and, and this summer we've got about 45 to 50 kids enrolled weekly so far. We received a $35,000 Rural Healthy Out of School Time grant that will help us um, in sustainability for summer nutrition and physical activity for kids. So we've partnered with USD 250 to actually feed on site to be an open lunch site at, Lake, at, at Lincoln Center. Um, and as of right now, including our 40, 45 kids a day, they're feeding 85 to 99 kids per day right now in Lincoln Center. And, and they believe that number will grow um, as, as kids catch on to, to where we're at. So pretty excited about that. We're offering lunch from 11.15 to 12.45 that's open and then open snack time from 2.30 to 3 o'clock every day. And that's for anyone uh, one through 18. So even staff it has the ability to eat, which is, which is nice. Kim, what did you project for this summer? What's your, I mean, you might climb above 99, but what, did you have any projections on what you might ultimately get? 
as far as um, the numbers, the number of kids. Are you just um, the figures? They they said with West Side they were sub, they were usually around 120, so okay. they projected it's going to get to the 120, 140 mark. So it's pretty. It's been pretty exciting, and it's it's pretty loud. I bet. <laughs> so it's great. A facility rentals, we rent out um, all of our shelter houses, and then Lincoln Center is the only facility we have left to rent. But right now we're sitting at about at 238 rentals uh, for this year with 7,374 scheduled visitors at, at, um, at those facilities. So we've had quite a few people through. The golf course, we've hosted two tournaments this year, and we have five more scheduled to be, uh, to be hosted. We've got 70 memberships that have been sold, memberships and passes that have been sold. Our daily rounds, not including those memberships and passes, we are, we're just about 2,100 um, players for just paying daily fees to come through the door, which uh, is about where we're at normally. And then um, our March, April, and May time is, is really taken up with the, the schools. Um, we have about 60 school um, children that golf, so between Frontenac High School, uh, Pittsburgh High School, St. Mary's Colgan, and Pittsburgh Community Middle School. We've got about 60 kids in uh, on their golf teams Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, um, from 3.15 to about 5. So we're, we're hopping at the golf course. So been moving along there. The Aquatic Center right now, we're at 361 memberships, uh, which comes from approximately 107 households. Uh, that is up. We've got 137 new memberships and 224 are renewals from last year. Um, we have offered 40, we're offering 47 classes, um, including swim lessons, um, Lazy River Challenge, uh, water aerobics, water yoga, um, and to date we've got 392 enrollments and eight private parties booked at the pool. And then finally, Farmer's Market. We received a $3,000 Meet Me at the Market grant this year, uh, which is to advertise um, for the sales of, of fruits and vegetables. We've been a little slow on producing fruits and vegetables, but I think we're finally getting there and we'll see some of our um, sales go up. We did change the way that we um, have our vendors pay this year. We reduced actually the um, seasonal rates and, um, and the, the daily fees. And took, we took the Web City approach. Um, we took their markets approach. We reduced the daily, uh, we reduced the fee for the seasonal vendor, but then they pay us 3% per market day that they're there. And then the daily vendor that would just come in, our specialty vendor, pays 6%. So instead of paying $25 up front and not knowing what they'll get back, they just pay us 6%. And um, that's worked out very well for us. And it helps us track our sales throughout the season which will help us when we go to write grants because we had no way of tracking what our sales were for the market before we started this. So i um, excited to see how it plays out for the whole rest of the season, but um, so far it's been good, um, no complaints. And we have 16 seasonal vendors right now and six specialty vendors at the market. So that is um, the majority of the update. I do have a quick slideshow to show of all the kids, which I probably could have just shown that and not said anything. <laughs> um, but. Um, I would like to thank the executive team. Um, with, uh, without the help of um, the other departments, we certainly couldn't get all the grants written. Um, so Jamie is always looking over financing and, and what we need to do. Um, Matt's team is always helping with mapping and GIS and, and stuff. So Cameron with his estimating and working and the police and fire showing up at our programs and events. So, um, and certainly my staff. Um, they, they work very hard and I'm proud of them for, for everything they do. So. I'm going to turn this on and hope that it works. Unless anybody has any questions first. So the um, the percentage of sales from the farmers market vendors is that like the honor system? Or? It is. Yeah. It is. Um, but Adam is pretty good judge of what what comes through. Um, so and so far, so far, um, you know, the vendors really understand that it's not anything that we you know implemented to. Um, you know, try to track them necessarily, but but to help the market and help us get more vendors into the market. Because if we can say, hey, this is what our vendors are selling, you should come be a vendor too. Oh right. Um, so they've really they really um, have bought into the, to the reasoning behind it, and and I don't think we've had any issues. You know, the other thing before you start this, I I think we should applaud all these people who contribute so much to our parks and recreation. Uh, you know, you just jotting down while you're talking 
Ronald O. Thomas, Pittsburgh Beautiful, the Pritchett Trust, the Pritchett Trust, and the Pritchett Trust. <laughs> Watco, Van Beether, Vietti, and all these grants that you uh, take in, you really uh, get good community participation for all this. And I commend you for going out and getting it, and them for opening their checkbooks. And Pittsburgh State University with all the volunteer work yeah. because we couldn't pull off all the programs that we do without our volunteers. Um, and you'll see some of them on the slide. So, thank you. Thank you, Kim, for not having any pictures of morning Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky I don't make it in there at 545. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she knew better to get her funding cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Kim. It's really impressive what the department does. All right. Consider the following. Item A, physical therapy loan. Consider the recommendation of the Economic Development Advisory Committee, EDAC, to provide a loan from the Revolving Loan Fund, RLF, in the amount of $25,000 to Alex Kuhlman, owner of Physicool Therapy, to cover the cost of the build-out construction for his new facility to be located at 722 North Broadway. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Commission, we don't have a video. That's, kind of a, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> But we, uh, we have been working over the last couple of months with Alex Kuhlman, who is a physical therapist who lives in Pittsburgh, currently practicing in Oswego. He is proposing to open his own physical therapy practice in downtown Pittsburgh in the location just south of Happy Nails. Uh, it's been vacant for the, the last couple of years. Uh, Mr. Kuhlman is financing the project privately. Uh, just needs a little bit of gap financing uh, help to help with the construction build out that's uh, that's valued at approximately twenty five thousand uh, dollars so he made application to the revolving loan fund the EDAC uh, considered this at their meeting last week uh, but first before I get to that I might ask Mr. Kuhlman to introduce himself tell you a little bit about himself and what he's looking to do and then I'll talk about the recommendation from the EDAC Alex thank you Blake my name is Alex Kuhlman I uh, I'm from western Kansas a little town called Nest City I uh, came to Pittsburgh State, um, I did sports here and was, uh, this became my home because I couldn't leave um, for six years. Um, <laughs> and uh, then I went to physical therapy school. Um, I had a 
a lot of job offers, obviously, in the rural um, areas of Missouri and Kansas and Oklahoma. But uh, my wife, also a Pitt State grad, we wanted to come back to Pittsburgh. Um, we just love we love the city, and um, you know I'm just getting tired. I've been getting tired of the drive to Oswego, and uh, I just through the scope of the healthcare kind of the change in Pittsburgh, um, where I think um, if I don't do this, I think Freeman or Mercy will um, within time, and uh, so I thought it was a good opportunity to have um, another option for physical therapy. Um, something downtown, something different. And, uh, you know, I think there's a, there, there's a need and um, I'm, just, I'm just grateful for any help that uh, the city will provide. So as I mentioned, the EDAC considered Mr. Kuhlman's request uh, last week, looked over all the paperwork. He submitted everything that we asked for, the EDAC uh, poured over that. And the recommendation to you tonight is a $25,000 loan from the revolving loan fund that Mr. Kuhlman would repay uh, over five years with an interest rate of 5%. So with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Will a lot of your patients be migrating from Oswego here, or are you kind of starting from the ground up? Both. So, so I spent three years at Oswego, and um, there was really no therapy department at that little 12-bed hospital. So uh, I worked pretty hard to build that department, and um, I kind of like don't really want to steal their patients. Um, so I have patients that will follow me, but I haven't really recruited, um, you know, Labette County and Cherokee County. Um, I, I do some home health as well, and uh, so there'll be there'll be a nice mix of patients that, um, you know, for whatever reason, maybe don't want to do physical therapy other places, and um, and I have good relationships with a lot of the doctors in town. Um, like Dr. Zafuda was my team doctor when I was a football player, and then uh, and Dr. Stringer's nephew and I played together, so I knew those guys long before I was a physical therapist, and. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just anxious to, to be in the in the town where I live and, and my kids go to school. What age range of patients do you All practice? All ages. Yeah. Kids also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And uh, insurance, you'll just are you going to accept Medicare, Medicaid, commercial? Yeah. Yeah. There'll be um, private insurance, federal insurance, um, and then they'll you know obviously there'll be pri private pay options, but. Um, you know, the health care, I mean, the, the insurance company is just it's such a stranglehold on health care, you know. How many employees will you uh, uh, start out with? So I'll, I'll, I'll have a front desk uh, manager um, with hopefully within the first few months. And then ultimately, if I'd like to hire another therapist down the road. Uh, I, the building's only about 2,000 square feet, so I think it's a two therapist, maybe two and a half, like a, a two therapist yeah. and then part-time. So maybe five employees, four or five employees is probably my max. Um, opening date? Uh, I'm hoping to have like a soft opening in, in a month, and then maybe a grand opening about the time um, August comes around. If there's no further questions, I move to approve. Been moved and uh, moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank aye. you. Thank you, Blake. Platt, all quip edition. Consider the recommendation of the Planning Commission slash Board of Zoning Appeals to approve a final plat submitted by Steve Lewis of Olson Associates Incorporated on behalf of Bob Boys and the City of Pittsburgh for property located in the 2800 block of North Broadway. Uh, what's before you is uh, the plat. Uh, we've worked with uh, Mr. Boys. This is uh, reason for this plat is for that uh, right of way to be dedicated for uh, the North Walnut Street extension, and uh, this will allow him to be able to split that front lot at uh, a later date uh, into two lots uh, through just a lot split that way. So, gives him some flexibility with that, but also gives us the dedicated right of way that we can build that North Walnut Street extension. I'll move to approve. I second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Cameron, you're up again. Yeah. 
Engineering Services Agreement, Highway 69 Bypass and 20th Street Concrete Overlay. Staff is requesting governing body approval of the Engineering Services Agreement with Trans Systems in an amount not to exceed $89,260 in which Trans Systems will design and create bid documents for concrete overlay replacement on the city's portion of the Highway 69 Bypass at 20th Street. Okay. Uh, what you have before you, uh, we had an agreement with uh, Trans Systems that got approved by the Commission back in February of last year. We held off on proceeding with that. Uh, the area that we're looking at designing is on the uh, bypass uh, there at 20th Street. The state's responsibility exists from the dead center of that intersection running north about 600 feet. Ours is from that center about 600 foot south. Uh, we'd applied for the C-CLIP or CLIP, the Connecting Cities uh, program. It's uh, what went and replaced the clink. Uh, we'd gotten approved for uh, that $300,000 each for fiscal years 19 and 20 for the state. Um, the total project cost for this was uh, estimated about $800,000. During that time from February of last year, we've been trying to work with the state for local folks to be able to try, local KDOT folks, to work their uh, magic uh, with the higher ups, try and get money to replace their portion at the same time, uh, just to save a lot on the traveling public and have economies of scale with the project. Um, we're about ready to give the go ahead for Trans Systems, go ahead and start designing the city's portion. And the state finally said that they were able to come up with their share of it. That agreement will be coming to you uh, next week for uh, the, that split. Uh, the reason why we've got the entire design, both the state and the city's portion on this, is the agreement that we've worked out with the state is that we would pay for the entire design of the project, the state and the city's portion, and then the state would take over all responsibility for construction, construction inspection, management of that project, and would pull us completely out of that quagmire of paperwork. Um, so in this, for approximately uh, $23,000 at the most, we save ourselves $140,000 or so potential liability on the construction uh, spending side of things. So we'd end up uh, foregoing that C-CLIP grant that use those dollars to help towards their construction. And when did this, you said, would start? Uh, it's expected to uh, be constructed next to calendar year is that falls right in between the fiscal 19 and 20. And how much would the, our share of that? The construction would have zero dollars in. Okay. And we'd pay for the less than 90,000 for the design. Cameron, in, in this uh, proposal, you use the word overlay. Uh, does that mean that the surface is going to go on top of the existing concrete or is that all going to be? Uh, the existing concrete there is actually an overlay in itself. It is. It's a three-inch thick concrete overlay there. Uh, what they're going to do is take out those three inches of concrete, take out three more inches of asphalt underneath it, and then put back six inches of concrete overlay at, when they're all done. How long did that last overlay last? Uh, I believe it's about uh, 15 years if I remember correctly. But the six inches of concrete would be a lot longer when it expect it to be so, yes. I move to approve. I second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you, Cameron. Non-agenda reports and requests. Another from staff. I have one thing that I'd like to say. Uh, it, it seems so often uh, at these meetings we don't really give uh, full uh, thanks to all of our employees. And I just want to take a minute and do just a little bit of that. I know that I, uh, driving down the road, I see these street crews out there digging, digging and working in, in the sun, and I uh, thank, thank you, God, for not putting me out there. <laughs> And I appreciate what they do. But one party in particular I would like to, to pull out of our city employees and thank 
and acknowledge uh, is Tammy Nagel. I have uh, been sitting up here for a number of years and I constantly see her stepping out of her job as a city clerk and doing other things uh, to make the city run well, to help with Darren or the rest of the uh, uh, people that uh, work with the city. And I think it, uh, I, I, I personally would like to extend my thanks to her for all the, the things that she does beyond the call of duty. Thank you, Tammy. Anything else? If not, I will look for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned.